Miles, I understand you took this lesson from actual events in history. Can you expand on the historical events which inspired this part of your philosophy? One of the stories from history that is most poignant to me is uh, the story in Gettysburg where General Lee had advised one of his generals to take Little Round Top. And the orders he gave were vague. It says, take Little Round Top if practicable. Well, that general didn't understand exactly what, those, what that meant. And so on day one of the Battle of Gettysburg, the, the Alabama troops he commanded did not attack that particular hill. At the end of day one and the beginning of day two, General Lee gave other specific orders, which was take the hill. And that day, many, many soldiers on both sides lost their lives because that hill was very, very important strategically to General Lee. What I try to take away from that is to get specific instructions from my client, try to create specific and clear objectives so we know where we're going so that we don't have to fight a battle later that we might could win early on in the process. I understand you realized early in life that you had a comfort with conflict. This has got to be a great advantage in such tense legal situations. How did you come to realize you had this ability to handle conflict? I was a young boy, and like many young boys, we had a neighborhood full of kids that were my age. But we had one kid that was a couple years older and a lot bigger. And he'd come around and from time to time would pick out one of the smaller kids and beat him up. I went to one of my older brothers and said, what am I supposed to do about this? And my older brother told me two things. One, you can never look scared. A bully's going to go after somebody that looks scared every time. Second, if there is going to be a fight, you fight hard and you don't quit until the fight is over. Well, I remembered that, tried to learn from it. Sure enough, that bully came around the neighborhood a, another time and picked out one of the smaller kids of our group and started, started a little fight. Well, I stepped in and followed those two rules. And that bully never came back around the neighborhood again to mess with us. In divorce, unfortunately, there's often somebody who's trying to bully somebody else in the process. It might be the lawyers, it might be the parties, it might be both. But it's an unfortunate fact of my profession that people seek out and look to impose their will on others when the legal system is designed to prevent that. But it takes somebody to stand up and say, you're not going to bully my client and you're not going to bully me. And take the matters that need to go to the courtroom to the courtroom and hopefully resolve situations. Wow. The only constant in life is change. And with change comes resistance and conflict. Miles, your comfort level in conflict must really help your clients maintain a sense of calm, even at their most trying moments in their case. Now, let's talk more about that client's actual experience with the Crone and Mason Family Law Practice Group. What's the first thing you would say a new client will experience at the Crone and Mason Family Law Practice Group initial consultation? Well, first we try to have a place where they feel like they can have a safe haven. They're going to be talking to very professional staff persons. They're going to come to an office that is designed to help with their emotional uh, status. We try to have a place that people can be calm and confident that they're going to get some important advice to help them in their difficult times. But and most importantly not be judged because a lot of people bring baggage with them in difficult situations and we don't look at client situations from a perspective of a judgmental person trying to decide whether or not they deserve our help no that's wrong what we're going to do is try to help that person with the best advice possible miles what else do you emphasize on that initial meeting to help the client regain control of their life self-care we talk about nutrition, we talk about exercise and the importance that it takes in our lives on a daily basis. We also look for our clients to cut back on alcohol or other things in their life that can be destructive. We look for our clients to do little things every day to help improve their emotional status. Now, 
Sometimes that may mean making a referral to a psychologist or a counselor to help our clients with the emotional aspects of dealing with this particular family law problem. But it all boils down to helping a client regain control of their life. Miles, another thing we have heard about you is that you have a unique set of attributes which make you extremely adept at handling financially complex divorces. Is it true that you trained and were licensed as a certified public accountant before you began practicing law? And how does this help your clients in these special and highly contested situations? Yes, I was a CPA and I enjoyed practicing as a CPA before I went back to law school. But where it helps me most uh, in most cases is what we try to do here is have a tremendous amount of attention to detail. In divorce cases, communicating information between client and lawyer can be a very difficult process. What we try to do is get the information right from the very beginning so that we can help our clients make decisions to help advance the process in an accurate, responsible, and timely manner. What types of things are you able to help assess in these financially complex divorces? Well, many cases have pensions, stock options, 401ks, IRAs, as well as business ownership. And what we try to do is educate our clients that in order to process the divorce, we've got to be able to identify what assets exist, classify them as marital or non-marital, and then value them. Without that, we can't process the divorce. So we try to do it quickly, we try to do it thoroughly, and help our clients understand what assets they have and where the divorce needs to go. Wow, you've had experience as a CPA with all the choices out there in the different aspects of law. Why family law? Family law presents unique challenges. We get to work with people who need us emotionally and financially. We get to work within a team of people that also love practicing family law. The one uh, overarching philosophy that attracts all of us in the family law practice group is that we love what we do. We love working with our clients. We love taking things one step at a time to help them through these processes, help them navigate an otherwise very, very complicated legal system and achieve important objectives in their lives. Well, handling financially complex divorces is obviously something your experience has you well suited to do. So, your philosophy includes driving the details of the case, using your expertise, and creating a comfortable, understandable client experience. All in all, it seems to all work toward the goal of restoring a sense of control in the client's lives. This can be very empowering to the client at what can be one of the most stressful times of his or her life. Thank you, Miles, for spending time with me today and explaining how your family law practice group works to help clients achieve the best outcome for their case.